I live in the Midwest, so it often feels like Solomon trail shoes are designed for trails that I just don't have. So when Solomon invited me out to the Colorado Rockies for a multi-day trip, I was excited for a chance to see what Solomon shoes are really all about. One of the shoes I tested was this, the Solomon Thundercross. Yo, what's going on everybody? My name is Kofuzi and I'm a non-elite runner who reviews shoes here on YouTube. And today I wanna to talk to you guys about the all new Solomon Thundercross. Now, before I give you my thoughts on this shoe, I do wanna go over some disclosures. This is a pair of the shoes that Solomon sent to me for the purpose of review. And the majority of the testing that I did for this shoe was out in the Colorado Rockies on a trip that Solomon paid for. So I did not have to pay for either the shoes or the trip. However, Solomon's not paying me to make this video or to use the shoe, and they're not gonna get a chance to preview any of my footage or my thoughts before you guys get a chance to see this video on YouTube. So with that disclosure out of the way, let's talk about the Solomon Thundercross. First, let's go over some specs on this shoe. We've got 27 millimeters of stack height in the heel with a four millimeter drop, giving us 23 millimeters of energy foam, which is a little bit of a more cushioned, a softer foam than the traditional foams that Solomon uses. It's some of its more aggressive trail running shoes. Now they've also put a bit of a rocker design into the front of this shoe as well so that way it rolls a little bit easier and then on the outsole we've got some really beefy lugs. After all this is a cross series shoe from Solomon and those shoes are known for their impressive grip. This shoe has five millimeter lugs in a multi-directional pattern. Up top we have a variety of materials that we're working with. There is this kind of TPU rubbery type of material that's along the perimeter and the front of the shoe that provides a nice little bit of a toe cap and is going to help keep some of the dirt and debris out. And then the material that's on the top of the shoe towards the vamp, this is a nice stretchy flexible material. It's not that breathable, it looks like it's a mesh material and it's kind of a dual layer system where this top layer is nice and stretchy, but the bottom layer is a little bit less breathable. The tongue is moderately padded in here as is the rest of this heel cup and heel collar. There's just enough in here to keep it nice and comfortable for longer trail running sessions, but it's not so much that it turns into any kind of water or sweat sponge on your foot. And also at the top here, we have Solomon's Sensi Fit and their lacing system where you put everything inside this top pocket here inside the lace garage. And all this is built on the same last or the same kind of foot shape as the Sense Ride. So if you're familiar with that shoe, that's basically how this shoe is going to fit for you as well. And altogether, this shoe comes in at a weight of 280 grams or 9.8 ounces. All right, now that we've gone over some of the basic specs, let's go over what it was like to actually run in the shoe. I really enjoyed this shoe for longer days on a variety of terrain, and that's definitely what we encountered uh, when I was in Colorado running and testing out this shoe. There was a lot of big climbs, soft, mushy terrain, and also rocky, scrambly kind of stuff that was unstable and definitely sketchy. I pretty much encountered it all, including water crossings and dry single track as well. And over all those surfaces, it felt really comfortable and confident to be able to have the Thunder Cross underfoot. I felt like the five millimeter lugs were well appreciated when the footing was a little bit unstable, but also also, when it came to harder pack surfaces, somehow those five millimeter lugs kind of disappeared in a very pleasant way. And I say that this shoe actually has some pretty decent road manners as well, which I found to be pretty surprising for a shoe that kind of looks the way it does and has five millimeter lugs on the bottom. And as far as the fit up top goes with the Sensi Fit and those strange laces that Solomon shoes almost always seem to have. I felt like it was very secure, but it wasn't overly binding. I felt like even though I wore this shoe for an entire day of trail running, 
at a time, it didn't feel like it was getting uncomfortable on foot. Now, as far as sizing goes, Solomon did size me up half a size. So this is a nine and a half that I ran in. And I felt like for kind of what this shoe is, it's supposed to be kind of a, a relaxed all day trail running shoe that can handle easy breezy trail running, but also stuff where there's a lot of instability or insecure footing. I felt like the fit on this going up half a size was really pleasant for me to be able to do, especially as the day kind of got longer and longer and your feet start to swell. Now I do have the Sense Ride 5 in a size nine and I feel like that is the right fit for me in that shoe because for that one, I want to be a little bit more aggressive. It's got an eight millimeter drop. I want it to be a little bit more nimble. So I want to be dialed in just a little bit more and having the size nine is just right for me in the Sense Ride. But I do think for the Thunder Cross, you're gonna enjoy it a little bit more if you give yourself that little bit of extra space and go up that half a size. This shoe was absolutely fantastic for me for a lot of trail running and also a bunch of power hiking as I got to some of those very, very steep inclines in the Colorado Rockies. Now, the other thing that I did do with this shoe is I did test this shoe at home at the trails that I do have near me. And I felt like the shoe actually did really well here too. I felt like it would kind of be overkill because of the five millimeter lugs and just kind of help like beefy and like it feels kind of like a lifted pickup truck in a lot of ways. Um, but it actually was really enjoyable to put on the trails that I have near my house. And I just really didn't think that I was going to enjoy it. But I just think that the relaxed nature of the shoe with the four millimeter drop and the energy foam midsole in here, uh, even though it's not the squishiest of foams, but it still overall makes for a very cushioned experience on those softer surfaces in the forests and the woods that are near my home in the Chicago suburbs. I also even was able to take it on a little bit of pavement. And again, this shoe surprised me in that it actually has really good road manners. I'd say better road manners than the Sense Ride 5 has somehow. And so I really think that it's going to be an interesting road to trail option for a lot of people out there because you can take it on the sidewalks, on the blacktop, but then you can also take it scrambling up to those mountain peaks and summits as well. I really feel like this shoe can do it all. Just about the only drawback that it has is, I don't think that it's the most kind of like speed aggressive type of shoe. So if it's a really technical descent or ascent that you want to really barrel through at very high speeds, I feel like some of the weight and some of the kind of like creature comforts of the shoe might just start getting in the way. But for most of the trail running that I do, I feel like the Thunder Cross was a really fun option to have. And it was probably the favorite shoe that I ran in of all the different Solomon shoes that I tested over my almost a week in running in the Colorado Rocky. And one last thing is, for those of you who like to wear your trail shoes casually, I think the shoe looks really good on foot just wearing it and it's comfortable to wear just kind of around town doing your daily errands as well. So it really is a trail shoe that somehow can do it all. All right, let's just try to wrap up this video and talk about some other shoes that I think might pair well with the Solomon Thundercross and some other shoes that you might wanna compare it against if you're considering buying it when I get into the buying guide section. First, let's talk about some shoes that might complement the Thundercross or that you can pair together to make a running shoe rotation. And if you're really enjoying the Thundercross on the trails and you want something more aggressive though, kind of like the one weakness that I feel like the Thundercross has, I think that the Pulsar Trail 2 Pro, which I also tested while I was out in Colorado, would be a fantastic choice. I love the fit of the knit upper. And on this shoe more than any is where I feel like the lacing system of the Solomon shoes really makes a lot of sense because you're able to get that knit upper, but also have it really cinched down in a way that locks you in. Plus the shoe has a plate and an outsole that's designed for not only grip, but also speed. So I feel like this could be a nice shorter sub ultra type racer to pair with your all day adventures in the Solomon Thundercross. And then the other shoe that I would pair with, if you're going to then switch out of the trails and get into the roads is probably one of my favorite Solomon shoes. And that is the brand new Aeroglide, which is new for this year as well. Also uses that energy foam. It is a little bit on the firmer side, but it is still a cushion shoe, even though it's not super squishy. It's just really comfortable for logging a bunch of miles if you happen to be on the roads. And so I feel like that could be a really nice one, two, three combo if you want to stay within the Solomon family. Now let's talk about the buying guide for this shoe and some competitors that I think 
warrant some consideration as well if you're looking at the Thundercross. Now this shoe is out now already. I think it released August 1st. So it's been out for about a couple of weeks so far and it retails at the full price of $140. And I feel like for what you're getting for this shoe, I feel like that's actually a really good price. And I do feel like this is a shoe that's going to last for a very long time. Here's some of the competition that I think you should also take a look at. At $145 is the Hoka Challenger ATR6. And I feel like on paper, these two shoes are trying to kind of offer a lot of the same things, kind of all day comfort, versatility for a variety of different types of trail terrains that you might encounter, and even a little bit of road to trail versatility. But I feel like the Challenger ATR version six and pretty much all the Challenger versions that I've tried just really don't deliver on the road to trail aspect. And they're also kind of blocky and I feel like my foot is kind of like cramped inside these shoes constantly. And I feel much more comfortable pretty much in all respects in the Solomon Thundercross. So I definitely picked that one. Plus you'd save five bucks on it as well. And then the other shoe that I think more on some comparison if you're looking at the Thundercross is not a shoe from this year, but I don't think it's been updated yet for 2023. I'm not sure if it's going to get an update this year, uh, but it's the Adidas Terex Agraphic Trail Ultra. That's a shoe that is a combination of light strike and boost, and it doesn't really seem like it's going to make a lot of sense on the trail, but I actually really enjoyed that shoe. The only drawback I had with that one was that the upper was really stiff and it pretty much took about 70 miles for that upper to stop cutting into the sides of my ankles every time I ran in it. So it was a bit of a labor of love to finally make that shoe work for me, but it's another one of those shoes that had really fantastic grip on a variety of surfaces, decent road to trail manners, the ability to go on multiple types of surfaces, but also really comfortable for all day adventures. So those are two shoes that I think warrant some comparison if you're looking at the Thundercross. And that shoe right now, if you're an Adidas member, whatever it is that you just sign up for free, you can get that shoe for $128, which which is down from the full retail of 160. And I feel like that's a pretty good price. Although definitely it's a shoe that I would recommend that you try on in store first to see if it's gonna wreck your ankles with how stiff that upper was. That's not a problem that you're gonna be encountering with the Solomon Thundercross because this shoe was comfortable for me right out of the box. So those are my thoughts on the Solomon Thundercross. It was a real surprise based on the spec sheet. I thought that I was not going to like it at all, but turns out to be one of my favorite trail shoes that I've run in so far this year. So I'm excited to talk to you guys about it. If you have any other questions, put them in the comments down below or better yet, stop by the live stream I do Monday through Friday right here on YouTube. I'd love to talk to you guys in the chat. That's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks so much for making it all the way to the end of this video. Hopefully you guys are staying safe out there on your runs and I'll see you in the next one. Yo, what's going on?